probably just as behind. You walked through that very door, door once. Well, I hit the... uh, yeah. You know, I, I discussed the whole mystery of uh, King Solomon's mines and the land of Ophir and King Hiram and the three-year voyage yeah. from Elat, yeah. from the Red Sea, yeah. to the mines of Ophir, the land of gold. Yeah. Uh, you're familiar, too, probably with Gene Savoy in the United States. I met him the other day. Uh -huh. He was here. He was here. Well, yeah. good. And he, you know, he's now claiming that he believes that the Chachapoyos area is the land of Ophir. And uh, myself, I, I tend to agree with him that I believe that the land of Ophir was also South America. But according to the Bible, the, the ships from Ophir left from the Red Sea on a three-year journey, one year to the land of Ophir, one year in the land of Ophir, and then one year to return. Now I'm thinking, in your book, The Maldive Mysteries, and coming to the Zero Degree Channel, uh, then out into the Pacific, to me, it's my theory that the land of Ophir is here, Chan Chan, uh, even here, Sipan, this area, and maybe the gold's coming out of the Andes, but I believe that somehow the, the Phoenician ships of King Solomon crossed the Pacific to come to South America. Well, if you look at the globe, and I have one, I show you. It is possible that they could come, but uh, everybody seems to look at the Pacific as nothing. It is half the planet. It's, yeah, it's uh, one, uh, one, yeah, look one third of the planet, yeah, I think. Look here. Here you have the uh, Mediterranean uh -huh. area. Sure. And here you have America. Sure. Yeah. Look, there is nothing at all to go here yeah, with right. the wind and the current. I agree, I agree. Compared to go all two-thirds around the, the world. But, you know, uh, I think it's the interesting thing that both Egypt and Israel yeah. at that time could have ports on the Mediterranean but also on the Indian Ocean yeah. for that trade. The now, to the land of Ophir, it seemed to be, I, I'm, I'm thinking, they would go through the Maldives, they would stop in Sri Lanka and, and uh, here in, um, in Sumatra, or, and even go through here, and then I believe cross through the Pacific. To, I to can the, guarantee you, I will give you everything I own if you can undertake that. It's not possible. I mean, it is absolutely impossible with any kind of uh, pre-historic uh, voyage to cross the Atlantic here. You can cross it here, the north uh, following the coast, but it's infinitely, even from the Maldives, if I was going from the Maldives to America, I would do it in a few months this way. But it would take a lifetime, many life generations to get that way. I can assure you. To cross the Pacific. Yes. The Pacific is excluded. You really don't think yeah. that people can no. cross the Pacific? Really? Not the tropic Pacific. Impossible. It's been tried by the best the people uh, imaginable. The bishop, who was a fantastic person, he tried to sail from the Philippine Sea to Polynesia. He tried for three years. Uh -huh. Then he gave up and went to Hawaii, and he paddled the Hawaiian canoe to Polynesia like nothing. Yeah. Then it was uh, tried by the, uh, what was the name, uh, I think it was the Taipei Expedition. Taipei, sure, yeah. Yes, uh, from, uh, from uh, Austria. They worked for seven years to prepare an excellent expedition in the Philippine Sea and sail uh, to Polynesia. And I, they asked me, what will happen? And I said, I can guarantee you, you're going to end up in Canada. You'll never make it. And that's what happened. That's what they, they skipped the ship off Japan, and uh, the, the wreck ended up in British Columbia. OK, in your book, Aku Aku, there's yes. two interesting things that I want to ask you about. One is you have uh, some fo photographs of some stone heads, some with beards. Yes. The other one is when you excavated one of the giant statues that's near the Rano Rocco volcano, volcano yeah. site, there was a ship yeah. uh, carved into it. Yeah. 
Now, uh, so who do you think these people are with the beards, and who, uh, what kind of ship was that that scarred onto that statue? The, uh, it's easy to answer the last question, because that we know, that was a reed ship, there's no question. A reed ship, sure. Uh, yes. And the Tortora reeds that grew yeah. at that volcano right. are coming also from so Lake Titicaca, yeah. and also from Chan Chan yeah. too, the Tortora You reeds. had uh, last uh, year, or uh, maybe it's been more than a year now, we had here a Spaniard, a good uh, friend of mine, Kitin Munoz. He built a Tortura reed ship in Peru and sailed it straight to the Marquesas in 57 days. So that is easy. So to go there but to return is difficult. This yeah. is what you're it saying. is possible but difficult. But if, if you want to return from any part uh, here, you have to do like the early Spaniards. You have to continue all the way over to Asia and go around and back in. And come to British Columbia yeah. like that. But as I say, it would be very easy to go from uh, Madagascar or even the Maldives, the Indian Ocean, just around the southern tip of Africa and over here. All the modern uh, sailing yachts, if they sail around Africa, what do they do? They go right across the Atlantic, almost to Brazil to catch the good wind and come back. And come back again, sure. So, uh, they, this, if, if the time span was what you tell me there, a year, uh, on a three-year voyage, it would be uh, no difficulty at all. I'd like to show you this. This is a petroglyphs uh, from a Smithsonian Institute book in 1893. Yeah. These are found in the Finky River in Australia. These are the petroglyphs here. It's like the menorah candle of the um, uh, of the Hebrews. Mm. This is an amber glass obelisk pin that was found uh, also in Australia. This appears to be Egyptian origin. These are also heads that were dug up in New South Wales. They appear to be Phoenicians, so this man like, maybe has a beard or something. Uh, are these dug up uh, really? Yeah, these are all authentic. They're from Australia. Um, because uh, where are these stone heads? These They're now in a museum in the Blue Mountains near Sydney right now. Because uh, if these are really found in Australia, uh, they look remarkably like uh, stone heads in uh, the Maldives and in uh, South Yemen. Yeah, South Yemen, right. South Yemen. Yeah. And uh, from South Yemen, I just had, was it yesterday? I had a letter from uh, a person who had been in uh, South Yemen uh, during the English. Uh, Rain there, right. and a big uh, ship with 50 people came drifting to South Yemen from the Maldives, uh -huh. and he said that the people on board that was a, that was a ferry boat going between the islands in the Maldives with school children and women coming on a and shopping a trip, storm blew them and away. a storm blew them to South uh, Yemen. And from South Yemen, they uh, worked and earned money, and then they set sail and sailed back again to the Maldives and got there. Yeah. Uh, you know, interesting too about the Maldives and your statue with the uh, people with the long ears. Yes. But also the Incas were supposed to have the long ears yes. like that. The Incas too. learned it from the Mochica, from the pre Inca, the people we find here. Yeah. Or long ears. Could you so speak a little bit about the site here? What is that? About the dig here that's going on here. Are you at liberty to speak about the site? And the dig. Yeah, the pyramid. Yeah. Have you been there? We walked up and were told to come back and get authorization. We we met with the Italian archaeologist woman. Young yeah, woman. Maria. Uh, Maria. Yeah, really. yeah. yeah. And we she but told us there were uh, twenty six pyramids there, etc. Yeah, but you you must go and see. You don't find another site like this in all of South America. Yeah, we we we, we, we walked there. we walked up to the pyramid. We walked up to the. Uh, you went up the Sorry. stairs and... Uh, yeah, but she met us. We couldn't come right to the dig. She stopped us from going just that part there. But but you went up the stone uh, or, or cement stairs to the lookout place. No, sir. We walked no. up the side of the hill. On the, the trail. trail on the trail. trail and we walked up. Hmm? Oh, you went on the, on the Wagona, the first uh, pyramid on the left. Yes. Yes. The the on the top. Where she is. Right? On the yeah. Top. Yeah, well, you should go further and up the stone steps and you'll see the whole uh, site. It's a terrific site. How big is the site altogether? 220 hectares. 
And I understand there are three different cultures we're dealing with. There's Mochica, Chimu, and Inca right. occupation. Right. 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 What's the estimated age at this point? Of well, this we have absolutely no estimation yet. That's why we are digging. Mm -hmm. It was assumed to be uh, late. But from what we find now, there is every evidence that it is uh, uh, early. Because we are, from, uh, we are starting on the surface, of course. So we have uncovered, on top of one pyramid, we have uncovered uh, Inca stone uh, temple ruins. And they are overlapping earlier uh, Chimu adobe temple ruins. First of all, it's the first time any temple has ever been found on top of any pyramids in South America. And uh, uh, there we find also sporadic shirts of Mochica and shirts from Cajamarca, from early period Cajamarca, contemporary with Mochica here. So even though we have not penetrated to any great depth yet already now, we have evidence that there was a trade or exchange contact between the Cajamarca far away up in the Andes and here. And we find plenty of evidence of long-range voyaging up and down the Pacific coast, plenty of spondylus from Ecuador and Panama. And uh, the uh, and we have uh, turquoise from Argentina, and uh, we are sure to find lapis lazuli, which is so common in Sipa, which comes from Chile. So from Chile. And we have jungle uh, bird feathers and ceramic from the other side of the, of, of the Andes. So we have evidence of extensive trade, long yeah. distance trade. Have you ever been to? Uh uh, Arica in Chile and to the, to yes. the pyramids there. I yes. mean, the, and the mummies. Not the pyramids, Not pyramids yes. the, mummies. the mummies. And they have dated those mummies as 9,000 BC, 11,000 years old. Yeah, that makes, uh, creates many problems that I think is difficult for many professional scientists uh, to accept. There may be errors in, uh, in the dating, but of course, uh, dried. Uh, human bodies is uh, possible to preserve that long. Sure. But uh, there is no reason to suspect that the civilization here goes beyond 3000 BC. But uh, what is interesting in Arica and on, in Ila, just to the north of the Peruvian side, Ilo, Ilo I'm sorry, uh, is the uh, evidence of intimate contact with Tiahuanaco in Titicaca. When I started uh, the Contiki voyage, everybody said that people from Tiahuanaco could never have descended to the coast. Today we know that there are pre-Inca roads going sure. down to the coast, and there is plenty of, uh, of Tiahuanaco materials, Tiahuanaco hats and ceramic wear, etc., in Ilo and Arica. In the uh, London Times article that criticized from your book, um, uh, I mean, they were saying that one of the main reasons they, they were criticizing you is that you continue to say that Polynesians are from South America. Is that really, is that your theory that no, Polynesians no, are from South that's America? A, if, if people are writing that, have never read my book. Yeah. Because in everything I write, I make it clear that I believe the present Polynesians came out of Southeast Asia by way of the no <coughs> northern route that I explained to you to Polynesia, and that there is a substratum from Peru. But there are so many people who have just one thing in mind, and that is to climb to the top and become famous by criticizing all the people who do something, and they have never done anything themselves, nor do they read the opinion of the other. I mean, I'm used to this, so I don't, it uh, doesn't uh, give me any ill feelings anymore. Do you think that, um, that the land of Ophir of the Bible might be South America? I have never uh, touched uh, upon that theory and that uh, thought. Uh, if uh, it is correct, 
what you mentioned now that it's a question of a three year voyage according to the bible it was three years yeah, yeah i think that uh, we should look at the bible as a serious uh, ancient uh, document and if I, if I speak purely on what is practical, it is possible to go from the Middle East to America and back in three years. Sure. Uh, one other controversial question I'd like to ask you is, um, you know, there are the Greek and Egyptian records of uh, possible at Atlantic uh, civilization, Atlantis, that kind of thing. Do you think there's any uh, credence to this uh, idea of Atlantis or a uh, lost continent or uh, or even just Atlantis was perhaps in the Caribbean or Florida or South America? Uh, what do you think? To this I will answer that there are theories about Atlantis and there are theories about another second continent in the Pacific. There is no second continent in the Pacific. That we know for sure because we know the ocean bottom and uh, we know that uh, there has never been any sunken landmass there in human times. When it comes to the Atlantic, the situation is completely different. We know that uh, before human time, of course, uh, Africa and uh, America was united. We know also from uh, oceanic research, the ocean bottom, that there was land where the Atlantic Ridge is now, dry land, because there is uh, deposits of fresh water plankton, which means there must have been a lake, and if there was a lake, there must have been a land around it. We don't know yet if that land sank before human time, but we do know that there was some uh, very severe uh, disturbances in the Atlantic about 3,000 before Christ because Iceland cracked. There, it is possible through uh, timber stuck in, uh, in, in a canyon in Greenland in the lava to date that uh, volcanic uh, disturbances to 3,000 more or less BC. And that crack continues into the bottom of the Atlantic. So it must have been a really strong disturbance. And 3000 BC happens to be a date that is repeated both uh, when we uh, study the beginning of the Pharaonic dynasties, more or less 3000, 3001 BC, also the Sumerian, 3000, 3000, 100 BC, the Maya calendar recalculated into our system is 3113 BC. And if uh, we study the uh, climatic changes in Sahara, it started about 3000 BC. So I think that when it comes to accepting or rejecting the Atlantis theory, we shall be very alert. We shall not reject it, but we cannot yet accept it before we have more concrete evidence. But it would be very curious if all these early civilizations started at the same time and all of them on either side of the Atlantic speak about a flood where land sank into the sea and where their ancestors uh, were saved and come to their subsequent destination. So I would not exclude Atlantis, although I think that there are so many wild theories about it that it is scaring the great majority of scientists uh, from accept, uh, accepting the possibility. Well, it seems that most scientists, uh, it's like the status quo, and nobody wants to rewrite the history books you know what I mean? Uh, they, and the way they are taught by their professors, uh, it's this lineage, it's difficult for them to, to somehow change and, and embrace new theories. Uh, so there is one great problem uh, with uh, modern science, which seems to be diminishing, but it has ruled uh, the civilized world for half a century. And that is that uh, they uh, 
discard all evidence one by one as long as there is no solid proof one by one and in that way they are very often I think throwing the baby out with the wash water instead of considering the possibility that when you have these many evidences is it possible that it is a coincidence or is it not I think that uh, from personal experience and I have a good deal of experience when it comes to traveling on the ocean with primitive crowds we do a tremendous error, uh, error by closing our eyes to the fact that there is no distance from Africa to America no distance from America to Polynesia if you travel the correct way and in the Indian Ocean you can travel one way half the year the other way the other half the year so there too we from the so. time yes from the time man had a boat that would float the ocean is a convener and not an ice field. exactly well I often point that out in my books oceans are our highways not barriers right. to travel Right. And the easiest way to get from one continent to another is not to, to walk, right. you know, all, all over the, the place, but just to go The barriers home. are the deserts and the jungles and the mountains. And the, and the hostile tribes exactly. who are going to attack you. Exactly. I absolutely believe exactly. you. And on the ocean, they can carry food and water in any quantity with them. On the, in the continent, they can only carry what they have on their back or on the back of a yama in, in this part of the world. And it's a complete difference. I think that one thing I, I have to disagree with you a little bit, just in what you're saying, or uh, at least to, to a certain extent, is that um, in, the, in the ancient times, I don't think uh, many civilizations, of course, were primitive in those times, and many civilizations are primitive today. But at the same time, uh, 3000 BC, there were very advanced civilizations, and their navies were advanced. And they weren't just floating in, in little reed canoes or balsa rafts. I mean, these, these civilizations had gigantic ships that were huge, as bigger than any ship of Columbus or the Spanish. Maybe. And with uh, Phoenician triremes and with, with large um, number of sailors and supplies. I mean, these ships were very advanced. And it seems to me that if just as Spanish ships were capable of saving the world uh, 500 years ago, these ships were capable of doing the same thing uh, 5,000 years ago. But that is not the disagreement. That is what I believe. Yes. That's what I'm sure of. Well, but what you uh, do not seem to realize is that you can build much bigger ships by reed bamboos than you can ever build by plan. And they can't be sunk, like you said. I mean, a reed ship can never sink. They cannot sink. You can big, uh, build a reed ship big as Queen Mary by reed metals. It's just a matter of having enough people harvesting enough reeds. But you cannot build a wooden ship that size because it will break on the wave crest. That's the difference. And that's why early man navigated the ocean on the reed ships. And only gradually did they develop wooden ships. But uh, definitely, the, uh, it didn't start 3000 BC. No, before 3000 that. BC, there was something that made a much earlier civilization spread in all directions. And that is where we shall have an open eye for possibly something uh, Like Atlantis, yeah. something like that. Wow, I, I think. Of course, it's really fascinating, and uh, I mean, the people traveled all over the world uh, on these ships. There's no doubt in my mind that they did exactly that. And I'm sure, too. We must realize that the cultural advance does not follow time chronologically. Civilization was much higher in ancient Egypt than it was in medieval Europe. And what uh, we look down upon people in medieval Europe, and with good reason compared to what we uh, will have to do if we look upon the Egyptians. And we must not believe that people in medieval Europe were more courageous 
or more inventive or more thirsty for uh, prime material than they were in the days of the Egyptians and the Phoenicians. So I'm absolutely convinced that we are uh, looking at people of those time with uh, superior uh, uh, eyes, but with no reason at all. Are you familiar, familiar with the idea of a pole shift where occasionally the, the crust of the Earth is, is shifting slightly and what was before the North Pole is, uh, is now down? Or, for instance, uh, the idea that mammoths are frozen in, the, in Siberia in the North and that at one point the Earth shifted one time. And a lot of this has to do with Antarctica and huge ice caps at the, the base. You are familiar with the Piri Reis map of the Turkish Admiral and how it is, seems to be so accurate of South America and Antarctica before there was ice in the covering all of Antarctica. Of course we know that uh, within the lifetime of man there have been uh, more than one ice age. And uh, there has been a warmer climate, for instance, in Scandinavia, Iceland, and Greenland today. There were woods in uh, those uh, areas where there today is uh, ice. Ice. So there has been climatic changes, but uh, and then of course it has been possible many times to move back and forth across the Bering Strait by by foot. Even so by they, even today you can do that. Yes, I mean, uh, there are many things like this we have to take into consideration. Sure. Um, you know, the Easter Islanders have the legend of uh, Hiva, and Hiva is a lost land that's like Atlantis, but it's, to them, I, they believe, it's now under the ocean. What do you think of this? I think that this uh, legend is not uh, made up by an Easter Islander, because I've studied all the Easter Island traditions that were recorded by the early Spaniards. By, 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 by the early missionaries, I'm sorry, uh, last century. And there is not one uh, with any contents like that. This is the sort of thing that the Easter Islanders will preserve, present to you today. That is why I would not accept any tradition on Easter Island today, which is not the same as those recorded by Payne Mr. Thompson and uh, the early missionaries, and right up to uh, Knoche before the First World War, when the real old timers lived and serious traditions were uh, written down. Today they will tell you what you like. It uh, must not be uh, taken seriously. Right. What about Rongo Rongo writing? Do you, do you see a I'm absolutely that? convinced that nobody has been able to decipher it. There have been all falsifications. And you put those people, uh, like uh, Barthel, to a test uh, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it was. Barthel insisted that he could read the Rongo Rongo. And you put to him two tablets today and tell him to read one. And he will not, because he know you can double check because of the signs. We have challenged him with all the archaeologists on my expedition. Nobody has read it. And the Russians had, through computer system, uh, discovered that it is written in a language different from that in Polynesia today. So until we know, we, we learn how to decipher a script uh, written in an unknown language, it will not be, uh, be deciphered. Now, in your book uh, on the Malda mystery, and you talk about um, the, the Indo civilization, Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, Lothal. What about the comparisons made between the Rongo Rongo writing and the uh, ancient Harappan writing, which is also undeciphered? I think it is interesting. I think that uh, I must admit that uh, uh, many years ago I agreed with uh, the Polynesianist uh, Emory and with Metro and uh, the other scholars that there could not be any connection uh, for chronological and geographic reason. But that is because everybody tried to bring it uh, against the wind and the current half around the planet from Indus Valley to Easter Island. Uh, 
but if drawing is much more accessible by way of the Atlantic, as I pointed out to you and all. So uh, from a practical point of view, it is possible. Uh, chronologically, there is an incredible gap, but there might have been stepping stones, theoretically. I don't exclude any root relationship because there are signs which are similar. Then the person in your book, Aku Aku, with the beard, is this uh, an ancient Phoenician sailor or Celt or what kind of person do you think this is? It's from ancient India? Do you have some idea? Well, this is uh, a question that uh, I'm unable to answer yet. But I'm quite sure that it is uh, one of those uh, people that the Polynesians speak both in their own traditions, which look like uh, Europeans, one of the kind of people that uh, Rogovin saw ashore when he came there with red hair, white skin, and long beard. One of those people that they speak of the Inca traditions and uh, Maya tradition, Aztec tradition. One of these people we have illustrated in Mexican and Peruvian art. It is still an open question who they were. Mm -hmm. But I think they were closer related perhaps to the Hittites and Phoenicians, uh, or maybe the uh, Guanches who uh, descend from the Berbers. I believe that uh, the closest relatives we find in the Middle East or North Africa. But you believe that those people are coming through the Mediterranean, across the Atlantic, to, to Colombia, Panama, then over to the East Coast, West Coast of Peru, and then on to Polynesia. I think that we should learn from history. The same way the Spaniards came to the Pacific, they came from the Mediterranean, across the Atlantic, across Panama, to Peru, and then built the more ships. Of Peru about the Polynesia, and then went there. And then do you think from Polynesia they could continue on west and yes. back to the back, perhaps then through uh, to Arabia? They can do the exactly Brazil. what the Spaniards did. And that is, they came uh, to uh, Middle America, across the Isthmus, built new ships on the other side, came to Peru, and uh, like Mikulian sailed there on the southern tip of, Af uh, of America, and like uh, the uh, first uh, the uh, uh, expeditions from Peru sailed straight across, straight across to the Philippines, and then on the world and back to America. That is possible. I didn't say that the prehistoric man did it. The Europeans did it in medieval ages with boats which, to my mind, are much more flimsy than the good region. What about going up the Amazon to Peru? Would that also have been that possible? That is possible. That yeah. is possible, and there is every reason to believe it was done. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm sure all of that happened in a... What? All the big rivers uh, have been uh, highways for early man. So it would be ridiculous to, to, to think that uh, the uh, Europeans were the first to, to do this, where all the people uh, who knew the countryside and knew what to hunt and catch better than them could have done for hundreds of years. When I read your book, The Maldive Mystery, I kind of, I felt, though you didn't really say it, that you were drawing a, some connection between oh, ancient Celts and the Harappan civilization and the Sumerians with the Maldives and then with Easter Island and the Pacific with the reed boats and perhaps South America. I think that uh, we are dealing with uh, navigators. Uh, you have to be a navigator to get to the Maldive Islands. You have to be a navigator to get to East Drive. And uh, I don't think necessarily that people travel from one to the other of these places, but that these were offshoots of the same tree, I think is quite uh, reasonable to conclude, because it's just weeks of travel uh, between one area and uh, the other, with stepping stones in the Panama Islands, for instance. Mm -hmm. Like that. Wow. Uh, well, just one last thing then. Uh, I'd like to say that, uh, well, we appreciate talking with you. And 
we have formed a, a club in the United States we call the World Explorers Club of people like you said who really go out to do things. And uh, of course you're definitely, uh, I think, one of the leading people who've done that. And we would like you to be an honorary member of our club and uh, just, um, we we're hoping you would just accept some, just some honorary membership with us. Uh, if that would be all right for you, I don't know. Well, you know, or you may not, of course you may not know, but I am one of the directors of the Explorers Club in... Uh, in New York. New York. Yes, right. It's been for many years. So uh, what is uh, the difference uh, here? Uh, our club is more, um, well, we'd be open to any person. It's a little bit like the South American Explorers Club in Lima. Yeah. Have you heard of that? But that will give me one problem, and, and that is that they have created a Norwegian Explorers Club. <laughs> and uh, I did not accept membership because I felt that it was uh, colliding with uh, the other Explorers Club. Uh -huh, it's and better just to so belong to one Explorers Club. Yeah, yeah. but uh, sure. I certainly appreciate that you are starting things like that. Um, wish you good luck, but right. I know that it will be ill feeling. May I ask one last question? Yes. What brought you to this site here? What brought me to this site? Yes, why this site? I was, I finished my uh, three new years of research on East Jordan, where I've been uh, organizing archaeological works from Was six. that in conjunction with the UCLA team that was working on East Jordan? No, Israel? no. I always uh, worked <coughs> independently. But uh, I came from East Jordan to look for uh, a project in Peru. As a matter of fact, uh, I had a plan uh, to start down in Hilo, right next to Erika, uh, Arika, below next to Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, when I gradually uh, came up the coast and heard about uh, Sipan, where, uh, and when I saw, uh, that was before professional archaeology had started in Sipan, Walter Alba, who had confiscated the material from uh, the uh, tomb robbers, the vaqueros. He showed me the golden mosques and things he had found with inlays of lapis lazuli and the uh, teeth of spondylus, which was enough for me to see here we have the first proof that these people, uh, the third century uh, after Christ, already knew the whole coast of Pacific coast of South America from Ecuador to Chile to get this material. So I felt that uh, this is an area that ought to be explored. And it was Walter Alba who then took me to Tucumán, who was completely uh, blank on the map. There's no map in the world before I came here. Didn't the locals? Showing Tucumán. The local people knew it, but to them, they were surprised, don't you have pyramids in Norway? I mean, to them, that was an everyday thing. They knew these as pyramids, and they were considered well, All the local people sure. knew it, and they knew it as uh, El Purgatorio, because the Spaniards had told them that this was the entrance to hell, and they burned people in there who wouldn't accept uh, Christianity. So uh, people, the local people, uh, feared it. and. Uh, until the present, uh, until I came, it was difficult to get people to work in there. No, they had overcome this. But uh, there were only a few the Peruvian uh, archaeologists who knew that there was a site and they didn't have the connections or the funds to start. So Walter Almar uh, suggested that I should try, and I went uh, to see the representatives of the uh, Peruvian the government here, the Instituto Nacional de Cultura, and uh, got the permission to start. This is a Peruvian project uh, coordinated by me, financed.